Okay, so today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about why I like five room dungeons as a planner, not just for a dungeon, which, you know, I mean, obviously dungeons are great adventures. They can be a lot of fun, but I wanna talk about the five room dungeon as a planner for adventures, just broadly and in general. And some of that has to do with the difference between an adventure, uh, a dungeon, or a game night. How, and a campaign, how are these things all a little bit different? All right, welcome to GM Vault. So I started planning dungeons uh, with the five room style dungeons. I, I never really planned dungeons. I'm not really into dungeons. I, I'm more into, um, you know, a great game night. That's really what it's about for me. How do you make a great Dungeons and Dragons game night? Right? That is what makes things exciting. If you've been watching my videos, you know that the thing that I think makes a role-playing game fun begins with one thing. It, you can have, I mean, there's so many videos on the internet and I have so much respect for content creators and home brewers and module reviewers and interviewers, all these folks on YouTube who create content about how to make Dungeons and Dragons or another role-playing game better than it already is. But let's put it down to brass tacks, as my mom used to say. It is about game night. You came together on whatever night that happens to be. For me, it's usually Friday or Saturday. And, um, and, and I'm telling you this as somebody who has been playing role-playing games for decades. And by decades, I mean like since 1979, 1980, around that time period, um, and then now. And somebody who's learning how to dungeon master, learning how to game master as I go along. Because I was never a GM or a DM back in the 1980s. Uh, I, I only recently came into it, so I've really had to embrace it with a different sort of approach. Um, as I was working on my PhD, I just poured my life into getting my doctorate, just poured into it, read articles every day. It seemed like every waking moment was all about building my knowledge on uh, the topic that I was writing on. Now I don't have that because I, you know, finished that and got the big uh, robe and, and I got the certificate and all that and it's great and, you know, there's a, another couple of letters after my name and a different couple of letters before my name, but what do I do now? And, you know, my kids are getting older and uh, I had some free time on my hands. I figured, well, I'm going to get my doctorate in Dungeons and Dragons and, and how to run a role-playing game. And I can tell you, I've never looked back. I love it. I love it. And I overdid it. Man, I over tried to game master. I over planned game, master, uh, game sessions. And you know, you've heard that probably in a few videos before. I have nothing new about what I'm telling you there. Um, here's the thing. I think the difference between maybe the way that I look at game mastering and the way other folks look at game mastering is there's really only one goal, literally one goal, a fun game night. If your folks come together and have a great time during your game, that's what it's all about. And I say that as a guy who, who game masters for folks who are in their late 40s and 50s. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've game mastered for people younger than that. Um, but the main thing is, you know, you only have so much time in your life and you're devoting three to four to sometimes five hours to a game, to a game that's mostly up here. More than that, I do it in it's not the best environment. I do it in a, a virtual environment on a virtual tabletop because the folks that I play with are in other parts of the country, 10, 12, 15, 17 hours away. And so we have to do everything online. It's a little bit awkward. We use Zoom and we use Foundry VTT. But the goal has to be, for me, how do you make a really fun game night? And so I go back to some basic rules and I, I didn't invent all these. In fact, I've, I've stolen them and gladly brag about the fact that I steal these great ideas. Um, but I, I try to plan my game nights uh, fairly simply. Uh, did you meet somebody interesting in the game? A fun NPC, maybe even a fun PC, right? Um, did you go somewhere cool? Some, somewhere interesting and intriguing that gets your brain working. Did you have a good fight? 
uh, a good battle of some sort, you know, but was it a slog or was it interesting and entertaining? And uh, did you get something? Whether it was a piece of information that sort of, you know, cliffhangers you on to the next game or something really cool you want to try out in the next fight, uh, some loot or something like that, some gold you're going to use to buy something in town, something to hook you, if you will, for the next time you get together. But all of those things put together, those four things, make for a really fun game night. But sometimes it's challenging to plan all that out. And as you well know, an adventure, a dungeon, a, a, a city adventure, any of these, uh, these adventures, they often can take two, three, sometimes four game nights to get through. Now, I am a big fan of John Four's five room dungeon approach. The thing is, I don't see them as dungeons and I don't think he does either. And I think a lot of people who use them go beyond just seeing them as a simple dungeon. But I see them as adventures. In fact, I plan all my adventures using John Four's uh, five room dungeon format. And by that, what I mean is a, an adventure is a, um, is a segment, okay? So let's say your initial segment of being a great game master is game night. That's your first chunk that you have to think about. How do I plan that, make it fun, make it interesting, make it intriguing, make people want to come back and have a great time and, and bring some joy to their life because, man, pfft, you know, that's what we need, right? Um, and then the second chunk that I think about whenever I'm planning is the adventure. Right? So if I have my game night, then I have my adventure. And there might be several game nights inside one adventure. Right? One adventure might be, oh, I don't know, uh, um, four game nights at, at the most. Sometimes three, sometimes two. All right? And then an adventure makes up a campaign. And there might be a pile of adventures in a campaign, but usually somewhere between 24 to 48 adventures. Uh, can be run in a campaign, and that's if you're planning on a long-term campaign. Some of the things I love about YouTube uh, games that I like to watch or, or, or podcast games is they try to limit the campaigns a little bit, 12 games. You'll notice, of course, the most famous, Critical Role, he, he doesn't limit it at all. In fact, they go for years and years and years uh, on these games, you know, just two, three, three years before they move on to their next campaign, which I think is a better way of doing it because I think it creates a sort of long-term camaraderie that you want that role-playing games, only role-playing games can give you, I think. All right, so let's talk about how you would use the five-room dungeon to plan out an adventure, all right? So your five-room dungeon is, is pretty straightforward. If you haven't ever walked through one, I'm gonna walk through it now. All right, so you got room one. In room one, you have the entrance. Uh, the entrance needs to be uh, why your dungeon hasn't been plundered before or why the PCs are the heroes for the job. That's a quote from John Four. Uh, what that means is uh, it, it has to feel tough. Otherwise, the local uh, farmers would have already um, you know, gone into this place. So room two is the puzzle or the challenge, right? Here, um, you got to noodle a little bit. Uh, it's usually a role-playing challenge or some sort of fun puzzle. There's so many out there on the internet that you can grab, um, and he's got great ideas as well. Then room three is where you uh, throw them a curveball, right? They're making great progress, and then suddenly everything falls apart. Uh, they get uh, split as a party, or there's a trap, or they have to start over. Nah, that kind of stinks. But either way, something flips it all around and they're like, wait a minute, uh, we thought this was a dungeon with an ogre. It turns out this is a dungeon with like a cult and they're undead and, you know, it's sh throw a trick. So they completely have to shift their approach. But, uh, uh, you know, the payoff at the end of the trick or the setback is a lot of times, and this is kind of cool, is that they are weakened in some way. Uh, what does that mean? Well, let's say there's an NPC with them in room three. That's where they lose the NPC support. Or maybe um, one of them is injured to the point where they're blind for the rest of the adventure. Or, um, you know, something that makes life a little bit harder for them. Um, they lose their so source of light or something like that. They're in a you know, magical darkness and they can no longer use light for the rest of it and their dark vision doesn't work. Hmm, that would be a trick or a setback and make things challenging, right? Something's going to happen there to really make them shift their strategy. 
That, that's always the trickiest room, I think, by the way. Room three, the trick of the setback. All right, room four. Room four, room four, the climax, the big battle. This is the conflict. Notice it's not at the end of the five room dungeon. It is room four, why? Because very often we as dungeon masters forget room five. We don't want to do that. It's part of the fun of a game night and a great adventure. Okay, so room four, climax, big battle, conflict. This is the big dog. Uh, the big guy may have unexpected powers, might have people with them, might have uh, uh, things about their lair with lair powers that they can throw into the battle and throw books or icicles or earthquakes or something like that at the NPCs. It should be challenging. It should not just be I hit, you hit. It should be a fun battle that engages the PCs into something that they're going to remember forever. And man, I remember some great ones over the years that we've had with my group. One of them was a giant eagle on the top of a roof. And I mean, uh, I remember my players talking about that for a long time, this massive eagle coming in to fight with them and, and uh, them in the end realizing it wasn't the true enemy and, and uh, not killing it. And oh man, it was just so much fun. Make it fun, make it interesting, make the uh, environment challenging and that sort of thing. And then finally, room five. The reward, okay, room five. The reward, the revelation, and the plot twist. Um, this is a fun room because uh, the player should get something. Might be where they killed the bad guy, whatever. But either way, they should get something out of it. Okay, uh, that's the reward. Um, there's uh, maybe a bit of a plot twist. Maybe there's two guardians in the room, or maybe there's uh, another treasure, but this time they have a map to get to it. Or, oh my goodness, it turns out their favorite NPC has been uh, behind it all along. Something like that should also be part of it. And that's the reward, right? The reward isn't just the gold or the magic items, but also some cool information that hooks them into the next uh, dungeon, if you will. All right. So that's walking through John 4's five room dungeon. I want to talk about how you can relate that to an adventure. And I think you've already started to noodle that out, right? This doesn't have to be a place. It doesn't have to be uh, a specific location. You can think about it this way. Um, say you've got a big campaign, like I do, uh, it's all about getting to the lost city, right? They're going through jungles and they've got desert time and things like that. And all of these things need to bring them a little bit closer to getting to the lost city. Once they get to the lost city, they'll have some more adventures there and then eventually face the big bad evil guy or guys or gals or things like that. Each adventure should move them a little bit closer to that goal, sometimes a lot closer to that goal, a piece of a map or a connecting piece of information that lets them know that behind the giant building Yonti army is actually um, a grand prophecy going back thousands of years. These little bits and tidbits of information bring them a little bit closer. So an adventure kind of works like that. Number one, why hasn't anybody solved this piece till now? That is your guardian or challenge room. That's your first step in planning a good adventure. Um, what's the hook? Why are your PCs the people for the job to solve this problem, right? And then once you've figured that out, that's your first step in using the five room dungeon approach to build a great adventure, okay? Um, a great adventure should start with a great hook. You've probably read that on a million websites and all I found was, why am I using different techniques to do dungeons versus adventures? It seems to be the same thing. The why are your PCs the people for the job? Why are the, the only ones who've been able to solve this? That's your first question to answer. And so, for example, uh, uh, my, my PCs recently came into the desert town of Lerakish, where the people that are dealing with the problems of all kinds of things coming out of the sewers. And uh, there's been a lot of strange smells coming out of the sewer grates and things like that. And so the PCs were asked by the local mayor uh, to investigate the uh, rumors of undeads in the sewer, undead in the sewer. Why not just send the town guard? 
Well, that took a little work. I had to think through that. I had to say, well, uh, maybe the town guard are busy with other things. And sure enough, that was pretty easy to set up because um, there was a, a bit of a revolt, a bit of a strike going on in the town with some of the, the workers. And I set it up so that uh, there was also a rival to the mayor's power. That is keeping the town guard and the town folks busy. So he turns to his trusted explorers, the PCs, and says, look, Go solve this problem because this is going to make me look bad. Uh, the mortician has been murdered. Get down there and figure this all out. They're the ones for the jobs. And then, of course, whenever they get down into the sewers, um, well, you know, they have to deal with undead. So that's kind of a guardian. Then they make their way through all of that and, and so on and so forth. All right, so now we get to the second stage of the adventure. Minus, uh, note, this isn't just a dungeon. It's an adventure because it's going to move my plot along in my campaign. The second stage of the dungeon is getting there. Uh, they've uh, struggled. It's a bit of a puzzle to make it through all these traps in the sewer and it's a mess down there and there's a hidden section of the sewer. So that's part of the challenge for them now is they're going to have to discover how to get to the source of the undead in the sewers. All right. So now we've gotten to room two, right? We got the, uh, the, uh, the real challenge there, the brain, the puzzle. In this case, it's just a pile of traps and, and negotiating the, uh, the narrow passageways of the sewer with rushing waters as the storm brews above. Then the next part of this adventure is the setback. And in this case, uh, they are going to lose something. Um, they're going to lose their ability to uh, cast some spells or they're going to lose uh, maybe uh, their access to healing or something like that. So something is going to be lost and they're going to have to shift their focus. And in this case, I'm actually falling back to the loss of their eyesight. So through a, the next section of the adventure, they will not have any vision. They will be completely in the dark and they'll have to talk through how are they gonna make it and figure out uh, the location of the bad guy's hangout uh, without vision. So this should be really challenging, should be a lot of fun, and it's gonna keep them busy for a couple of hours. In fact, I'm not even sure we're gonna make it through the adventure uh, in one night because of that right there. They're gonna have a lot of noodling to do. Then, uh, of course, we'll have the big baddie room. We've gone through now three rooms. We've got to the trick of the setback, and we're now to the big baddie room, and they get to the room, and they find out that there's this big, bad, evil guy who's been working with the auntie out in the jungles and has uh, found a soul gem for an ancient demon and has put together a flesh golem to host that soul and uh, now is in the midst of com uh, completing that ritual. All right, so they're, they're coming in the middle of the ritual, uh, and if they, if they do well, there's gonna be some positives. If they, if they move quickly and are able to stop the ritual, then the demon will come back, but it will not be fully powerful. If they are unable to complete, uh, stop the ritual from being completed, then the demon will come back with full power and faculties. Uh, and, uh, and also, uh, the big bad evil guy is gonna be getting away pretty quick. Um, so that's a big fight. There is going to be a, a setback in the fight, so uh, the demon is going to summon additional demons for them to fight, so that'll be challenging, right? And then they're going to receive the big reward to challenge, and this is where your five-room dungeon truly becomes an adventure, a hook for the next part of your campaign, right? And that is they're going to get a piece of information that tells them why is all this going on? Who started all this? And what is it for? Why is there a crazy big bad evil guy in the sewers of a desert city uh, trying to build a flesh golem for a demon and filling the sewers with undead? Well, that will be revealed in the final thing that they discover and hopefully will push them forward to the next adventure adventure choices that they have to make. Because I have several of these in a pile, right? So I, I know the adventures that will be happening. There might be five or 10 of these things that I have planned. They can pick from any one among them, but this one in particular will lead them to two or three down a particular path. But they have some others in the past. I mean, they're fifth level, so they've got some other paths they may want to follow. I'm fine with it because I've built these in chunks. I mentioned that before. First chunk is game night. Second chunk is, uh, chunk is adventures, and adventures move the plot along in your campaign. 
that gives them agency, that gives your players the right to choose one way over another, right? So there's so many different things that they can choose from there. And the beauty of it all is that you feel fully prepared. It's an easy way to set up an adventure. You can plan one of these things out with bullets. You literally just a, a piece of paper with some bullets. I use Scabbard uh, RPG Campaign Manager online because I can go back to it anytime on my phone or anywhere. I go in there and I, and I will just list it out, right? I'll say room one, room two, room three, room four, and room five, knowing that it's not just rooms, it's more like chapters in my adventure. And I try to think of encounters. And in an adventure, a lot of times you may have multiple encounters, multiple bad guys, multiple groups of minions and things like that, which is, which is all well and good. That's great. But that uh, brings me to my final uh, concept, which is using the I have a plan for a great game night, which is... Uh, uh, meet someone interesting, uh, go somewhere cool, uh, fight something uh, challenging, and get something cool at the end. Those four things to build my game night. And I, um, I actually do that sort of right after the last game. So whenever a game is finished, I go, okay, so what? they didn't quite finish the adventure. I need to finish up uh, the, uh, the next block. Right, so I try to think through, uh, okay, next Friday, uh, who are they going to meet, where are they going to go, what are they going to get, and what are they going to fight. And then I try to make sure that at least those things, maybe more, um, more things happen, and it doesn't always turn out this way. And there's exceptions to everyone, right? We've spent the whole game shopping in town, so that's fine too. Um, but your adventure slash dungeon then makes up the next chunk, and then it's so easy to plan those out once you think through the five rooms of John Four's uh, five-room dungeon. And, uh, and then you can use those to plan a literal dungeon, or you can use it to plan a, um, an actual uh, adventure that's gonna last multiple games. And then you chunk those and you say, how are these things moving them towards fighting the big bad evil guy in my big campaign? Before you know it, you've chunked your way from game night to adventure to campaign and you feel, you know, pretty prepared as a GM. And I have to say, that has been uh, my doctoral study in game mastering. And uh, of course, there's a lot of nuances along the way, but that little piece has been hugely helpful for me in feeling um, easy and positive about game nights, never feeling stressed, always feeling prepared. Um, I mean, there's always bad weeks, but I'll be honest with you, with this method, I have always felt like uh, Friday's gonna be fun.